Hey guys, thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. Alright, I know you're completely confused about this engine math calculating dynamic versus static compression. Now why is this important? It's important to understand because static compression is static, not moving. Those are based on just raw dimensions of your engine. Dynamic compression is a calculation that is when you, if you imagine your, your crank coming around underneath and as the crank is coming up, if the exhaust valve is open, as the piston's on its way up, you lose a little bit of compression. So your dynamic compression will be less than your static compression. Okay. Now, in order to calculate that, I'm going to go through this calculation one more time because I have a lot of complaints and questions as to how I came up with that number. So, I'm going to give you the rules to figure this out and help you figure this out yourself. First of all, the calculator is important. You have to use a scientific calculator, number one, because you need the functions. The calculations for this were used, uh, I used a two, T85, I'm sorry, a T84 silver edition calculator, and I have to thank my good friend Bob, thanks a lot Bob, for forwarding me his calculations to confirm, and he helped me out with this, and I really appreciate him helping me help you make this more clear. So, first, the calculator is important. That's, that's going you know, to have a good scientific calculator. Second, you have to set the mode on the calculator degrees. When it comes to you, the, the mode will be set to radians. If it's set to radians, your, your calculations will not come out right. So you've got to change it to degrees. So read the information on your calculator, figure out how to set it to degrees. Third, you have to set the float. The float is the number of decimal points that the calculator is going to use to, to uh, calculate. Set it to five. Five decimal places is a good number. You can use all ten if you want, whatever it's set to, but at least five you need to do these calculations. And finally, if you're going to set up a spreadsheet and you're going to use Excel to do these calculations for you, you have to do a conversion because the default mode in Excel is radians. And you'll have to take your numbers, convert them to degrees in order for these calculations to work. Okay? So, let's go through the math one more time. It'll all make sense and hopefully it'll be clearer and you guys will be able to calculate it yourself. Okay, you're going to have to figure out the, some, there's four, four numbers we're going to have to figure out in order to figure out our uh, dynamic compression. Now there are some variables that you're already going to know. You're going to know your RL, that's your rod length, which is three inches. You're going to know your stroke in inches, which is 3.5 inches. And you're going to know the installed centerline angle on your camshaft. That will come from the cam card and I have a cam card handy here and I'll just show you right here as good as I can right here it says if you say these specs are for cam installed at a hundred and this one's at 106 degrees uh, intake centerline angle so the, the, you'll get your centerline installed centerline angle off your camshaft okay cam, cam card now the first number we're going to calculate is RD and RD is one half the stroke times the sine of the 72 angles. So it's one half of the stroke times the sine of our installed center line angle of the camshaft. That comes out to, which is one half is 0 0.5 times 3.5 times the sine of 72 is 0 0.95106. You notice 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I said set your calendar to the flow to 5. You'll get five decimal places. Use all the numbers. Don't truncate the numbers, use all of the digits. You need all of them every time. Don't change anything. This comes out to 1.75 times 0.95106. So our RD is 1.66, 1 1.66435. Okay, now I'll erase this. Let's calculate our RR. Now for the RR, the RR equals one half of the stroke times the cosine of the installed center line. Of 70, I'm using 72 degrees just to make it easy. But whatever your camshaft or your, your cam states, that's the angle you use. So it's one half of the stroke times the cosine of 72 degrees, which equals 0 0.5 times 3.5 times 3.5 times the cosine of this, which is 0 0.30902, which is five decimal places. That equals 1.75 times 0 0.30902. So that equals our, our um, RR for this one is 0 0.54078, okay? 0 0.54078. Now, we'll calculate the PR1. Okay, 
Now we're going to calculate PR1. The PR1 is the square root of the rod length times the rod length, rod length times rod length, minus RD times RD, RD times RD. That's where these numbers come from. So rod length and RD. So that comes out to the square root of 3 times 3 minus 1.66435 times 1.66435 double parenthesis, you know you do these operations separately. That's the square root of 9 minus 2.7706. So we got the square root of 6.22994. Again, remember, don't truncate your numbers. Use every number in the decimal. Our PR1 for this equals 2.49598. There's our PR1. Now, all we have to do is calculate our PR2. Now, PR2 is simply PR1, PR1 minus RR. So that's 2.4958 minus 0 0.54078, and our PR2 is 1.95520. Now, using all of these numbers, we can go ahead and calculate our dynamic stroke. All right, now we can calculate our dynamic stroke. The dynamic stroke is our stroke minus PR2 times one half of our stroke minus RL. Our stroke is 3.5. Our PR2 is 1.95520 plus one half of the stroke, one half of 3.5 is 1.75 minus RL, our rod length, which is three inches. You do all the calculations there and our dynamic stroke comes out to 2.79480, which if you take our stroke of 3.5 and subtract this number, you have a difference of 0.7052 inches difference in stroke. That's just under three quarters of an inch difference in stroke. So that's the difference between dynamic and static compression. Static compression is based on your stroke of 3.5 which is your at rest stroke. But while the engine's moving, based on the installed centerline angle of the camshaft of 72 degrees, that 3.5 is actually 2.79480 which means your compression is lower. Your, your dynamic compression will be lower than your static compression and that's important because when you're choosing your cam, you might do your calculations and say, oh, my compression is going to be 11.5 to 1 and choose all your components around that when in fact, if your cam has a, a installed load separation angle, or I'm sorry, the installed centerline angle, depending on that, it could lower your dynamic compre compression considerably. And if that happens, if you drop from 11.5 to 9.5, that's a huge difference in octane requirements. That is why it's important to understand what your dynamic stroke is. So there you have it. That's the difference between static and dynamic compression stroke, the numbers and how you calculate it. Now, if you, want, if you don't want to go through all this math, you can just Google dynamic stroke calculator and the tons of them will pop out. You just dump your numbers in there and it'll spit it right out. But it, depending on what they use and the method they use, it could come up different. So if you go and Google that, take your numbers and plug them into several different calculators and see how different it comes up. It might be minor, but it might be enough to make a difference. So if you do the numbers yourself, you're sure that you used all of the decimal places, you're sure you, you used all of the right numbers, and you come up with a number that you can rely on. So when you're choosing the components for your engines, specifically at this point, when you know your compression, you're going to want to know, how, if I need to lower the compression, do I need to put a thicker head gasket in to increase my volume in my chamber? Uh, do I need to cut my piston down to, to sh do I shave the piston down to reduce compression? That's, that's going to make a big difference. Or do you need to boost compression? Maybe when you have your static compression, it comes up to, let's say, 9 point, let, 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 let's say you do your static compression and it's 8.5 to 1. You do dynamic and it comes out to under 8 and you've got to boost that up. Well, you can boost that up by shaving down the head deck or the head and, and lower your combustion chamber volume and increase your compression. So understanding the difference between the two is going to be the difference between having a great engine and an outstanding engine. I hope that helps you. If you have any questions, leave them below. Text me. I'll try and answer them as quick as I can. I hope that clears it up for you. And i really like to thank my, my good friend Bob, one of, one of my viewers. He, he sent some calculations to me and he went through them a few times. And on the way, he kicked the old lady or kissed the dog and got a cold beer or something like that along the way. But he had a really good story on how he figured this out and helped me out. I really appreciate that, Bob. Thanks a lot. Um, really, uh, send me your text messages or your, your emails. Or leave comments below with your, your, your suggestions or any help you can do with us. And I appreciate all your help from everybody. Uh, you guys are great. All the text messages I get and emails are awesome. 
Takes me a while to get to the email, so don't count on you know instant reply from the email, but I answer texts as quickly as I possibly can. Uh, I appreciate all your input, and I really appreciate you stopping by Pete's Garage.